Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. 26-year-old New York resident Gregory Rubenacker was pretty proud of himself, pretty proud of his crimes on January 6th. In videos that he shared with friends as he was entering the Capitol, he was heard yelling, quote, holy shit, this is history. We took the Capitol. Um, he then sent additional photos and stories to his friends on Snapchat. He showed that he was smoking weed. He was vaping inside the Capitol. And in one video, he was heard and seen saying, quote, smoke out the Capitol, baby. Smells like freedom in here. Um, in another video, Ruben Acker says, quote, America, baby, what a time. Uh, in another video, Ruben Acker filmed the mob with the Washington Monument in the background, and he captioned it, quote, America is pissed. And in video captured by a reporter, Ruben Acker was seen, along with a group of others, chasing Officer Eugene Goodman up several flights of stairs. That was the officer who bravely took on a mob of angry Trump supporters all by himself. So Ruben Acker exited the Capitol shortly after that, after he chased Officer Goodman. But then he re-entered the building just about 20 minutes later. And then about 20 minutes after that, Officers started moving Rubenacker and others towards the exit, and Rubenacker was recording himself screaming at these officers. He yelled, quote, you serve this country. Are you even proud of yourself? Are you guys even proud of yourselves? Who are you serving? Who are you guys serving? Who are you guys serving? <laughs> we are the people. Why are you not protecting us? Uh, so within minutes of that, Ruben Acker then swung a plastic bottle at one of the officers, and then he sprayed the contents of that bottle. He sprayed water at several officers, and that's when he was finally forced out of the building for the final time. And as he was being pushed out, he yelled again at the officers saying, quote, this is a communist act right here. I hope you guys are proud of that. This is communist act by you guys. This is communist act. So Ruben Acker was arrested on February 9th of last year, and he was hit with civil disorder, obstructing an official proceeding, assaulting or impeding officers, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, two counts of physical violence, impeding passage through the Capitol, and parading or demonstrating in a Capitol building. Shockingly, in February of this year, Ruben Acker pleaded guilty to all of the 10 crimes with which he was charged. This is without a formal plea agreement. So based on the most serious of the felonies, which is the obstructing an official proceeding charge, he was looking at a sentence of up to 20 years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. However, federal sentencing guidelines, as you guys probably know by now, are much lower. So the prosecutors were only requesting 46 months in prison, three years of probation, and $2,000 in restitution. Ruben Acker's attorney, as you might have guessed, was asking for only 12 months of home confinement. I mean, at least it wasn't probation this time. And at the sentencing hearing, Ruben Acker tried to convince the judge that he's a reformed man. He explained that 
he took part in ongoing therapy since his arrest. And he said, quote, my actions on January 6 don't match who I am. And I am truly sorry. Rubenacker also apologized. He said, quote, I just want to say sorry to you guys for having to go through all the cases. I want to say sorry to the United States of America. I wish I hadn't believed the lies. Unfortunately for Rubenacker, he got one of the toughest January 6 judges of all, Chief District Judge Beryl Howell. Judge Howell allowed a victim impact statement from Officer Eugene Goodman to be allowed into the court record. That was something that Rubenacker's defense attorney objected to. He said that the government was the victim and not the officer. Uh, the judge also asked if Rubenacker still believed that the election was stolen. And his attorney said, oh, no, he does not. He no longer believes that. And then Rubenacker's attorney argued for leniency due to the fact that his client is a musician. If that sounds strange, I'll explain. <laughs> he said, quote, any very long or lengthy prison sentence would totally derail the progress that he's made. The music industry is fickle. It's not something that's easy to get into at a later time in life. It's more of a young person's profession. Ruben Acker then also told Judge Howell in part, quote, I have been making music for eight years and everything I have been doing for the past eight years has finally started coming to fruition. But Judge Howell replied, quote, this defendant is a grown up. He was a grown up on January 6, 2021. He should have known better. And then she also told Ruben Acker, quote, I want to emphasize that chasing Officer Goodman up the stairs was antagonistic conduct. It was threatening conduct. It was scary conduct. And she called out his entitled attitude. She said that Ruben Acker was, quote, excited to start smoking marijuana and pumping on a vapor. He brazenly filmed himself doing that and posted it on social media. To me, that strikes me as a person feeling so bloody entitled with his right to be there inside the Capitol building and was so exhilarated and excited about his ability to overwhelm the police, he celebrated by smoking marijuana. In the end, the judge sentenced Ruben Acker to the lower end of the sentencing guidelines. She gave him 41 months in prison, followed by three years of supervised release, and she ordered Ruben Acker to pay $2,000 in restitution. This highlights the weakness of judges like Randolph Moss, who literally just one week prior, he sentenced Matthew Miller to only 33 months in prison. What Miller did was far more aggressive, far more dangerous than what this guy did. Yet Judge Moss gives him basically a pass. And, and it was due in large part, as I shared with you guys, to his age. He was 21 at the time of his crimes. Ruben Acker, he was only four years older than Miller at the time of his crimes. The judges should not be allowed to issue a sentence that falls below the federal guidelines, period. And as for his musical career being derailed, I understand what his attorney is saying. It's a very real concern. Maybe he should have thought about that, you know, before he put his entire future on the line for a well-known, well-documented con artist who has taken advantage and screwed over every single person within his orbit. So yeah, eight years you've been working on this. Long before Trump came along as a political candidate and all the time he was in office and this guy didn't learn anything. He saw nothing that caused him to take pause or concern and, hey, maybe I shouldn't put my future on the line for this type of person. Anyway, guys, I will let you know when I hear more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.